Well, it's day two. I'd like to say that I got here really bright and early and just been working hard, but no. I pretty much drove around town all last night and this morning, but I think I got the fixings we need to try to get some more stuff done. Needed longer bolts for the blower pulley here. I uh, got a digital fan and all the electronics we need for that and a switcher later. Some muffler strap because, you know, we're going to cut the mufflers off. I'm going to focus right away this morning because I didn't sleep thinking about this lower pulley. I read on the interwebs that sometimes you got to hack out the cross member and goodness gracious I hope that's not the case but I am prepared to do it if I need to do that. Just really need to put the throttle down today because after today it's pretty well go time. Would be nice to test on this tomorrow morning before the competition. That won't happen. So that's where we're at right now. Moment of truth. Will this even fit? That fits on there. That's not even remotely close to fitting on there. That's perfect. Great. All right, time to start trimming. And that's going to be interesting cutting that low. Ooh, I got the death wheel. What a professional cut. No, nope. really crooked. It's fine. Technically, if I drop the power steering, I might not have to notch the frame, but then I wouldn't have the old PS out there. And that might be vital when you're trying to spin cookies, donuts, circles, whatever you call them, spheres, burnies, whoopies, not sure. Try this now. Yeah. Yep, yep, mm-hmm, okay, yep, mm-hmm. That doesn't feel normal. We might have clearance, Clarence. Nope. I don't think we do. No, I need to ponder. If that is in fact assembled correctly, there is about four cow hairs between the end of that pulley and the cross member there. So I'm gonna try to thread some bolts through that. And then I gotta wrap that belt around it and see if I got some clearance there. And I don't know how much this engine rocks in there. I'm sure the engine mounts are shot. So it's just gonna be a little bit of touch and go for a minute. If you're wondering why we're not using this really super nice brand new lift in here, uh, A, I would be cheating. But to be honest, I probably would use it. It's got truck arms on it and it just won't fit under the car correctly. It would be deathly unsafe to use this. So uh, we're just happy to have concrete. I'm used to roll around in gravel and rocks and thistles and thorns. And stuff like that, but that's why we're not using this, because I'm sure you're scratching your head by now going, just lift it up, but we can't. Oh, this, all this would just bolt together. I would be such a happy camper. Before I tighten this pulley down, because I don't think I'll have the clearance afterwards. So we'll set that off to the side. Whee! I'm just practicing. Whee! Kaboom! Oh, there it went. Oh, I think we got it. I'll take good news. Basically, once the engine rocks, it's going to touch. So luckily, I've only got to send it for three minutes because after that, the belt's going to be gone. Pretty sure. Yep, positive. Great. Now I got the power steering belt just all sorts of twisted up in there. Somehow went under the alternator belt. I wonder if I keep going this way. A little bit of brute force, fix about anything. Get it over that. How do you loosen or tighten that? Don't know. Never seen the likes of that before. What if I go around this first? Mm -hmm. Didn't I just tighten that? What is going on? <sighs> Retighten. There goes my wrench. There goes my extension. I'm back. Back to where I was 37 minutes ago. Putting this power steering belt on, see, is a real easy process. One more little crank. What's one more again? Little crank. One more again. Hey, 
we're not on fire. That's great news. I keep these all the time because they go right in the Q jets and uh, they're handy to have. I snipped the fuel line off because I got to do that anyway. The carburetor has a fitting that comes forward with the fuel pressure gauge. And I hooked this line up over to this jerry can because I'm about to spin it over. So all the fuel, that way it's not dumping on the engine, put it into this can over here. Yeah, what I'm looking at mainly is this pulley down here. I want to make sure that that's as true as possible. It's not doing this. When I rotate it over, it's a big thing. Get a hole in here so I can breathe a little bit. All right, let's see what it looks like. That looks great. So I got a wire here that used to run the choke. With the key on, I get 12 volts. So I'm gonna hot wire this fuel pump into here. And then I can start extracting some of this old fuel that's been sitting for 74 million years. And then I get to drive around town later tonight and try to find some actual good fuel. Something hopefully 96, 98 octane, even 93, as long as it doesn't have that corn meal stuff, oatmeal, whatever it is. And that's going to help detonation and my timing on the blower. And hopefully, you know, last three minutes, basically. High pressure approved. Of course, these are hyper toughs. You got to use the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. I'm just unplugging the blower motor. Save a little bit on the battery if we can. If I jam this into here and I hook this to a ground. Well, am I mistaken? Or do I got a dead pump? I think my pump's dead. It's running. It's just not clicky clacking. It's not really succulating very good. Huh. That's too bad. Ouch. Those are sharp. Did that help any? I don't think it did. Oh, that does help. Can I fit my hand in there? Nope. So how is a guy going to do this without disconnecting these lines? These are in the way this way? No. Yep. Probably. Great. Well, how does that even bolt in? Must be this one. Yep. Just gonna keep taking stuff apart until things move. And then it's important you just forget how it all goes back together. There we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, we really got stuff moving. I don't know if I needed that much movage. I picked up this fan. I have no idea what CFM it is. I just told the gal, give me the biggest one you got. 16 inches. It's probably around 1,500, 1,300, 1,200, I don't know. It's over 1,000. And if we just let this thing scream nonstop, we stand about a 32% chance of keeping it cool. That seems okay. <sighs> now do we push it or do we pull it? I can't, this is all, there we go. Wait a minute, how come it didn't come with the kit to... Isn't there usually uh, zing-zang strips in these? Uh, well, that is frustrating. Guess I gotta go back to the parts store already. Does it fit? Not even, not even close. Just way too big, you know. Okay, well, here we are again getting nothing done. Sure, that's close enough anyway. It's always painful jamming these through new rads, but I think they're getting a little bit more clever with different mounting strategies you can do. I can't even see the bottom. I'll just let her float down there until it becomes an issue. Well, which ones go where? That's wrong. There we go. Bring it over to this side. 
Now I just figure out some grounding stuff. Time to get the actual blower on. Hopefully that seals. Click, click. Click, click. 26 foot pounds. That's about right. I got something for up here later. When and if it runs. Oh, that's hard on the back. Something like that. Get the bolts. I do need to find the torquelator specs on this. It is very specific. You can't tweak this case up. You're really gonna mess up your Teflon in there. Well, ones that have Teflon anyway. And I already lost the other two bolts. So that's good. It's tight. 12. Boy, that doesn't seem like a lot. But what ends up happening is this can get distorted if you go crazy on this. And you get these all bound up in there. That is on. Big step done. We did check this belt does line up relatively closely. Water neck should fit. Get this on. I think I'm going to jump down and put the lower rad hose on. The other one's just rotten. I don't mind if it blows out personally. I just would feel bad about all the coolant all over the burnout pad for the next folks. And then once that's done, we'll come back up on ignition. Get the lightning hoses done. Lightning where they're all buttoned up. I got an Excel coil we're going to put on there. I want to make sure I got a really, really bright, big, loud lightning storm going on in here. That'll help burn up this fuel. And then we're on to little things like wiring and hopefully we can test this thing very soon. Oh, dang, forgot about gauges. Eh, whatever. We might have got actually most of it out of the dang thing. There we go. I don't know if we're gonna get the new one in there. That thing was just pressed in. This is why we're replacing it. The, the end was just completely rotted out. That hose clamp later was just right there. Pretty good chance that was gonna pop. Especially when I get it to 374 degrees. Why won't you just go home? You're supposed to, you were supposed to go on here. Ah, there we go. That was easy. It just slides right on there. Might be a cut to fit, I'm not sure. Bump this over, see if it tracks. It does. Easy. I'm trying to understand how that even adjusts. Help me understand this. Oh, found it. <laughs> it's actually relatively easy if you just look. There's a big bolt that says adjustment right down here. Although it's slightly impossible to get to. And I also have the wrong size. But I mean, other than that, it should be easy. Oh, I think it went on. It's saying it's on over there too. Come back now. There we go. That's loose and will most likely squeal at full throttle. But that's how everyone's going to know that it's running. We'll leave it be. This fan is nice. Anyway, oh, lower rad hose. That's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Is that kinked? Feels like it. That's fine. Just keep bringing it on. Got the rustiest hose clamp in all of the US of A. Speaking of rust, this is the only rust I've found in the car. Right there. That is it. I'm gonna bump it over again. Get the top dead center. It should be coming around. Yeah, might have just heard it. That was the compression blowing out against my finger and my whirly-woo here 
is lining up with my borrowed marker mark. So this would be top dead center right there. So she should fire off right about here. So I'm going to get my distributor clamp, clamp it pretty firmly, and now I can put the cap and everything else back on and know that we're pretty dang close to where this thing should just light right off once we put the fuel and make it happen or on and all that other jazz. Such a dirty, dirty little piece. Wow. Wow. Bolt's too big. I think it just bottomed out in the casting on this intake. Yep. So, got to find some washers or, I don't know, another bolt. That won't happen. Oh, I just dropped it anyway. I found one in Kurt's toolbox from Monster Transmission. Hope you don't mind, bud. He won't. He's a nice fellow. But that goes right in there for me. Just get this snug. When it fires up, we'll be able to quickly grab it and make some ear adjustments. Yep. This one's got lightning all over it, as you can see. And it's also been sun faded, which tells me it's been sitting in the window for 37 years. So we'll use this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh-huh. Yep. Sure. It says unhook the battery. Nope. Not doing that. I wasn't liking the way this was sitting in here, but I just, I can't tell left from up at this point. So we're just going to squeeze her down and see what happens. Oh, I've got to put the Excel sticker on the car, right? We're at here, here. Let's go here. Clean it up with the dirty hand. Boom. That's 15.5 horsepower at least. This one got little marred up. Not sure how. Let me get the right tool for that. This is uh, your bolts not quite going in or 200. They're pretty handy. You just clamp them on here. There we go. Boom. We've got a fuel make it happener. This carb was custom built and we powder coated it to match my 72 Chevelle, which I no longer have. But it's a boost reference carburetor, which you want to make sure you have when you're running boost. And pull through and blow through are different applications too. See, guys really got to pay attention to that. And then make sure you drop one of these nuts down onto top of the transmission there where you're never going to get it back. <sighs> I guess I could walk around and do this, but that seems too easy. I just want to get the look. I'm going to put the air cleaner on it just for, just for giggles to get the look. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way that hood was going to fit. Not even close. But it does look snazzy. Well, I think it's lunchtime. I need a wobble pop. And then we're going to come back and keep ranching on her. Full NASCAR fuel system with uh, high school matching colored things in here. Something like that. That shouldn't kink up. And it looks really tacky, which I like. <laughs> this probably worked. There is spider egg nest in there. So I'm going through and putting these lightning hoses back on. Once I get these routed, then I'll move on to button up the fuel. I got to modify the throttle bracket and do some stuff over there. And then we're going to cut the mufflers off. I don't want to fire this up with, a, with the mufflers on it. It just doesn't feel right. I got, you got to hear it. We'll move on to, I've got a sawzall here. We'll just zip them off basically. Just like that. Five, seven, two. Okay, that should be it. Since this is a car show, you gotta, you know, doll it up a little bit, put some lipstick on here. I'm actually pretty impressed with these Walmart zip ties. So this bracket, it's made for a quadrajet, and it usually saddles the rear of the carburetor. 
luckily they put this pin on here. So what you can actually do when you run a holly or an edelbrock is you cut it right here. Let me get my precision pointer out. Right here. And then when you bolt this on to the carburetor, this pin will actually stop it from rotating. And then you can use this factory bracket right up here and make it work. So I'm gonna get the death wheel and just zing that off. Broken blade, don't measure, just guess. And this should pop right on here. This should pop right on here. So this is gonna pop right on. Dang it. That's the one I meant to do the first time. There, throw your hardware back on. Now we've retained stock throttle cable and everything. Once I tighten this down, that pin will hit and this won't be moving. I gotta get the right, you know, thing. If you wanna use the longest attachment you could find. I'm not sure why, but that helps. I got a little adapter piece I gotta put on here and we'll get the throttle cable hooked up and then we're on to cutting the exhaust. We can fire this thing up pretty soon. if I shouldn't change the oil while it's in the air. Otherwise, I just got to jack it up again. Yep, I suppose. Dang it. I'm going to drain the old oil, which really wasn't that bad. But I got some stuff that is going to hopefully help us keep this engine alive a little bit longer. And I don't know what this is. <sighs> Come on. Hey, she's got CarQuest shocks in here. I don't know. There must be... Is this a Caterpillar engine or this has been going? I mean, my neck is burning. I can't keep, I can't hold my neck up much longer. <sighs> I think it was overfilled, to be honest. Oh, there comes some chunks of something. Oh, there's some chunky stuff. You just never know. Okay, just, you need to be done. I'm getting tired of waiting at this juncture. This frame rail looks nice though, to be honest. <sighs> Still going. Is this even gonna hold it? <sighs> Wake me up when it's time. <sighs> we got ants coming down the door. Okay, that's that. We're gonna just say that's good enough. Uh, I have grown impatient. And just make sure you put this on so tight that no one else will ever get it off. I should get a filter cutter one of these days, but that's quite a bit more metal than I'm used to seeing. But we're gonna pretend we didn't see that and just um, push this over in the corner and just say everything's fine. It's good, we're good to go. Exhaust comes out and then down in the mufflers, I'm gonna cut it to where the pipes are facing out right towards the tire. So if we get any smoke, that exhaust should just blow it right out. But then we'll have to fab up some sort of bracket. But I got all these miscellaneous hangers and I call this plumber's tape, zip ties, whatever we need. We'll make it happen. I'm gonna get the sawzall and just zing zang that off. Something fell on my neck. It's fine, it's just rust. And then... Stubborn devil. I guess I need to unbolt it. Who would have thought? Nope, I'm just gonna cut it. Boom. Yeah, that should melt that brake line and stuff over here pretty easy. So I think that's good. And she was, uh, no, it's in pretty good shape, but we still needed to get rid of it. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to cut this one. Well, it wants to come off and then it doesn't, and then it says it'll come off and then it won't. I just... Okay, well, it's off. True sign of a Corvette owner. No mufflers. 
I am missing the new balances though. We'll do a quick system check here. You know, where you just, yeah, it's pretty good. And then we're gonna fire this thing up for the first time with a blower, new carb. And I'm confident it might run. There's a 72% chance, no, 81% chance that it'll run. I do need to get my timing light out and ready. Go over the fuel system quick. Make sure the electronic is plugged in for the old lightning whirler. We're not gonna run it long enough to worry about coolant or the fan or anything like that. I just wanna hear it fire. Flavor oil this time is Royal Purple 520. I've ran this in a lot of boosted engine, it does great. To be honest, the only reason I bought this is I had a coupon and it was only about two or three dollars more than the diesel engine oil, but she's got the zinc and all the other vitamins you need. It is legitimately purple, by the way. Oil, spark, fuel. I think we're ready to see if this thing fires off. I got my oil pressure gauge down here in the drain pan. I don't have that hooked up yet. I just got her vice gripped off in case it starts leaking. That'll just go right in the pan and uh, hopefully not get all over this nice floor. And it'll take a minute to build fuel pressure, but that's okay. Neutral check. Still nothing here. There, it's starting to build a little pressure. John, thanks for the help. Appreciate it. So, let's get some fluids in this bad boy and then we'll set the timing. But, you know, I got her dialed in by ear already. But we'll put this flashy doodab on it and see what it tells us. And then maybe we'll have enough time. Well, I don't even know what time it is, but there's still daylight out. Maybe we'll go for a test trip up and down the streets. And then we've got a couple small things like an AFR gauge. Yeah maybe fan I guess I got a wire in yeah maybe it's some other things but it runs it's alive sounds good pretty happy pretty happy get your uh, grinding disc also known as a blown up cutting disc get some fresh metal That's an easy box to open. I think we only need a foot, maybe. Not too bad. Yeah, sure, that'll work. Get my digital box. I've had these for so long. It's just a rusted pile of junk, basically. That's yeah. Butt connector. Get some buttage down here. I guess that's a snail. Huh, I'll be dead. Hello? He's not home. Okay, and then this positive I'm gonna bring into the cab, which I usually really don't like to do. I like to switch on the negatives, but I need to pull power from the fuse box. Or no, we just talked about this. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna run this over here to the choke wire. That's right. Will this fit? Oh, so close. Maybe if I bring it out of here. Look at that. So what this will do is, when I hit the key, it's gonna excite this right here. And that'll give us 12 V's down to the whirly-woo. 
and then when the key off, it turns off. Then I don't have to put the switch in, and I can return that and get my $7 back. Hey, that's good. Well, let's test on it. We should get fanage. Nothing. Completely nothing. Very disappoint. Well, what the heck did this one go to? Not sure. This is the choke wire. That one hangs down there. This one comes over here. Down here with the ants and spiders. What's this one say? This is not the original. This is an overlay. And the original one's behind it, so I don't feel bad drilling through any of this stuff. And I'll put a little off on. I'm just going to have to put a piece of tape up here or something that says, Hey, guy, turn the fan on. Because you don't want to forget, is what I'm saying to you. So the red curly Q goes down into the thingamawidget here. There goes every connector. Seven dollars down the drain. Anyway, did some red wire down here. I guess I can go on the inside and pull it. That would be smart. Got plenty. Got 78 feet in here. I'm kind of feeling like we'll go up over here, dip back down, go inside of this clip thingy, swoop around, and then we'll bring it down right over here. Yes! Yeah! Okay. Sure. That looks... You can't even tell. This thing is going to cook. Well, 30 volts. Oh, see, six amps. So like right here? Bounce, 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 Ow, those are hot. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, yep. What's that say? Oh, not even close. That's good. Keep going. Now? Ooh, much more close. Er, er. Or just like two cow hairs, and then we got it. That might have been enough. Bango. I think I even got it at exactly 10.5237 degrees south, southwest. <sighs> now I gotta weld this in and then put in that magical wizard device, and that'll tell us what the air fuel is up in this uh, piston pumper power making machine. I got more cut wires. Dang it. So I was using this Century FC90 welder. I got to practice with it, but let me tell you something. It worked actually really great. Nice little lightweight unit. You just pop in your wire here. It's gasless, plugs into 110. So I just throw this in my toolbox and carry it with. Just for moments like this, <sighs> there's just so many wires and everything's stuck to ant traps. And, you know, it's just, the guy's having a day. That's what I'm saying. Oh, now it's all, now it's stuck to the mirror out there. I'm thinking about sticking this right here. There's already a, well, there was a screw that went in here, and I lost that as well. I'll find another one. Stick that up there. That way it's out of my Sasquatch legs radius, and the passenger can deal with it. And then I got some room to jam wires and stuff in here and figure out my CB radio thing. I don't know what that is. Yeah, we'll be good to go. I think now I just need power and ground. I don't need any of this output jazz. So I'm just going to dig through here and try to find some switchable power. Well, that's the radio. wonder if we could just zip right into that. I bet you we can. There's power right there. Bang and bang. Piece of kick. Over oh, 999. Poo. What's that mean? Well, I guess that works. I just got to hang her up now. I'll just take all this extra. Just jam it in here. That should start a fire, maybe. Not quite sure. Can't kill the grommet. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Got to shine them up on those valve covers. Got the oil pressure gauge done. AFR gauge is done. That's taken care of. We got some vacuum caps. Got that stuff plugged off. So I think we're down to... We got to drain the old gas out got a proportioning valve we're going to plug right now. I'd like to try to bleed the front brakes. Coolant. Timing. And I got a rev limiter too. I'd really like to get in. 
That way a guy can just mat it and hang on. So we're getting down to the short list. It's just a bunch of little piddly stuff. I mean, I could pretty much run it right now. It'd just be, you know, you know how that goes. He's getting fuel. We could try to drain some of this nasty stuff out. So what I'm doing here, I'm gonna try to suck a late about five gallons of gas that's in here, which is a mixture of whatever was in the tank, plus the five gallons of good gas I put in the other night. And then we're gonna put in five gallons of pump gas. And then I got a fellow bringing some uh, aviation fuel. And I think that's 102 or 104 um, leaded, I'm thinking. Not sure yet. He'll be back and then we can mix it up. I think I just ruined this hose unintentionally. <sighs> so we'll be replacing that as well. Oh, it's just yellow varnish. <sighs> it's bad, basically. I'm gonna go pop the gas cap off, see if we get more flow out of her. Nope. Just making a big mess. Could be doing other stuff, but this concrete is feeling pretty nice. It's about 207 degrees out today, 104% humidity. And this concrete is just heaven. Other than I'm laying in gas. Oh, the ants are staying away from me though. That's a plus. For cooling, I'm gonna go with this peak full strength. That'll give us our best chance to keep the temperature down on this thing. It's such a bad angle and the wrong funnel. Oh no, this isn't my Florida leak stuff on. I'm trying to cut this fuel line off. It's being a bugger, rotted. I tried to take it off below. It basically just blew up in my face. <sighs> of course you can't reach nothing. There's 87 hoses in the way. Can't see nothing down here. I just keep twisting on things. I'm not even sure if this is the right hose. mule. That is really, really rotted. I have a fear I'm not going to get my arm back one of these times. I don't think I'm making progress. I think that's good. Sure. We'll call it good. If I get the clamp over tightened on there. Victory. Nice guy that works here. Ran over to the airport for us and he grabbed some 100 LL, which is, I believe it's low lead. So we're going to put, I think there's four gallons in here give or take. And then I'm going to put a splash of 93 in here and mix on it a little bit. And basically this is just going to help me from uh, pinging this thing to death. I'm still going to be conservative on the timing, but you can never be too safe, I guess. Outdoor event. Make no claims to any of the music. I don't know what that is, but it sounds neat. Put it at uh, 26 degrees right now. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Want to crank it?
think I'll go down that road real quick to see what the AFR does. What do you want the bad news or the bad news? Lift it all the way out of the bay. Completely destroyed them. So we got the poor vet pushed back into the shop here. She's got some issues, but blower is on, supercharger installation, success, might I say. Not quite sure what we're going to do with the motor mounts yet. We got a couple other things. It would be nice to have just a touch of brakes. I got a rev limiter we're going to think about, and I got something going on with the AFR gauge, but that's pretty much going to do it for tonight. Leadfoot City was nice enough to cater some food, so we're going to go in there, get some chow, and then tomorrow we'll figure it out. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned. Burnout competition coming up.